since I've pretty much gone full circle with my strawberry plants, I thought I would try to put together a complete video about my strawberries um, from the time that I planted them up until the time they uh, end up in a jar as jam. They have just about finished producing. Um, they've done rather well given the fact that uh, they only planted these a couple of months ago and um, so far I've put up 21 jars, pint jars, of strawberry jam. We've had strawberry shortcake more times than I can remember, and I've given strawberries away, and we've had strawberries on cornflakes, and I've eaten strawberries while I'm out here working, and grandbaby loves it. She's been covered for, with strawberries from head to toe. Uh, so I've really enjoyed growing these plants. And, uh, I was supposed to pick the blooms off of the strawberry plants the first year, and I did that to half of them, and I left the other half to bear fruit because I needed some strawberries. And um, I'll show you the ones, if you see how these, they're kind of weak looking plants because I let them bear fruit. And I'll show you the ones that I picked the blooms off of, and there is a huge difference. Here's the plants that I kept the blooms picked off of. They are a lot bigger, a lot healthier, and they're putting runners out like crazy. See how the pathway there is just slam full of runners. What I plan on doing is putting some flats of dirt down in there so they can root. And my daughter-in-law wants some plants and some friends of hers want some. Uh, they're... They're, over, they're knee high, very big, very healthy. And the uh, runners have taken root down here in the beds. And uh, you're supposed to only allow each plant to produce two runners, but I don't know how on earth I can get in there and sort that out. So I'm just letting them do their thing. But I bought the plants off of a website called Norse Farms, N-O-U-R-S-E, and um, I ordered them in the winter, and uh, they said they would ship them at the proper planting time for my area, and about two weeks before they were going to ship them, they emailed me and reminded me that um, they would be on their way to get the beds ready, and then they emailed me when they shipped them, and uh, when they came, they were very nice plants. They have very healthy root stalks and um, uh, very nice crowns. Per their instructions, I planted them so that their roots were straight down. I bought some strawberry plants from Walmart last year that were in little packages. And um, their instructions said to dig a hole and make a mound in the center of the hole and spread the roots out over it and then cover them with dirt. I did that and only about a fourth of the plants in those packaged plants came up from Walmart. And I've read comments uh, on YouTube videos from other people that said that they also didn't have any luck with the um, Walmart strawberry plants. So uh, you may not want to waste your money or your time on those plants. These are just, just excellent. I don't think I could have uh, done any better anywhere else than uh, with these plants. They're just amazing. Um, last fall I did buy some strawberry plants from Walmart that were in little four inch pots and so I have a few of these too they're um at, these are ever bare strawberries and the variety was called sequoia and they have done very well you see they're very large berries and again these have been here since um since the fall and they were they kept producing right up in, until uh, I believe in November last year. So these have been real nice. 
but they were in the four inch pots. They weren't the little packaged ones that they sell in the spring. So if you see some of those, I, I recommend the uh, Sequoia Everbearers. I will say though that buying the strawberry plants in four inch pots isn't the most economical way to go. Those plants cost me over three dollars a piece. Um, the ones that I bought from uh, North Farms, they had them priced, um, you know, if you could buy 50 for so much, you could buy 100 for something like $30, um, 500 for uh, about 80 Now, I wanted about 200 plants, and that would have cost me about $60. And then the next price break was at 500 plants for something like $80. So 200 would have cost me $60. For $20 more, I got 300 more plants. So that's what I did. I got a lot more plants than I really needed. Um, since hindsight is 2020, and seeing how uh, these things have put out runners, um, I probably should have just bought 100 plants. And uh, if I picked, if you pick the blooms off, they will put out runners like crazy. The ones that I let bear strawberries haven't put runners out like the uh, the ones that I picked the blooms off of. They put out a few runners, but not like this. These have just put out runners like mad. So if you want to, if you have patience and um, can wait the extra year to get berries. You'll get a lot more plants if you pick the um, the uh, blooms off of them, and uh, it'll pay you back in in runners. Um, when I built this uh, raised bed garden, I put down the pavers, and it was a little bit expensive. I was picking them up for about 99 cent a piece. But I gotta tell you, that's one of the best things that I did because could you imagine trying to weed eat around all of that? Um, the pavers have worked out very nicely. I have a lot of places where the plants have overlapped, and it would have weed eating would have been a real problem, down, like down there with the carrots and and uh, strawberries. So if uh, if you're putting a raised bed garden in, I really recommend the um, the pavers around them. It's well worth the expense. As I'm picking these berries, I'm finding that uh, some of them have been damaged by some kind of little beetles. Here's one. I uh, haven't had problems with them up to this point. I uh, also haven't had a problem with birds eating the berries. I thought for sure that they would end up getting more than, than I did. But the birds haven't been a problem. And uh, I should have put straw down here like the man that goes by the name YouTube Sucks that said to. But um, I haven't had time to do a whole lot. I didn't want to put it down because it would be a problem to weed around. And now look, I didn't even weed it, so... <laughs> I've been so busy, I've been building a, um, a chicken house. That's taken all of my spare time. I've just about finished it. So, uh, I'll be making a video soon showing you my chicken house because I did a few things to it that I haven't seen anybody else do. This turned out real nice. And those beetles are sure taking these berries over. Of course, my grandbaby didn't help this any. She, um, one day she came out here and she picked a green strawberry and I told her it was yucky. And she tasted it and said, yucky. And then the next day we came out and I was on the other side of the garden weeding and kept hearing her say, yucky, yucky. And I looked over here, she was pulling my little green strawberries to beat the band. Okay, here's how many berries the bugs left us. Uh, I've been filling this bowl up to the top usually, but um, like I said, I'm near the end of uh, what I'm going to get off of these berries. Um, 
So that'll be enough for probably about two batches of strawberry jam. I'll probably get about five pints of jars out of this. Thought I'd show you this uh, this flower here. If you've never seen it grown, it's absolutely gorgeous, and it blooms all summer long. It's perennial. Uh, if you've ever planted perennials, you know they usually have a short blooming season, but this one doesn't. It will bloom like that all summer long. It's called Gara. They have a white variety, and they also have a pink variety. I like to keep a few flowers in the garden to attract bees and uh, butterflies and things. That's a nice plant. There's another one. Looks real pretty with a picket fence. Okay, let's make some strawberry freezer jam. Uh, the first time I made this was about 28 years ago, and it was so simple that I thought there was no way that we were going to like it. And um, we haven't had cooked strawberry jam since then. It is real good. It uh, tastes like fresh strawberries. Um, so all you have to do is wash the strawberries and cut the caps off and then mash them up. They recommend using a potato masher, but I find that the um, Vidalia Chop Wizard does a real good job. I use the fine chopping mechanism in it. Just chop them up, and for every two cups of berries, you need to add four cups of sugar. And just like I predicted, I ended up with enough berries for two batches. So I have four cups of berries and eight cups of sugar. Just mix the berries and the sugar and let it sit for 10 minutes. Then for each batch, you need one box of sugar gel and three quarters cup of water. You put the sugar gel and the water into a, a pot, bring it to a boil and let it boil for one minute. Then you add the um, sugar gel mixture into the strawberry mixture and stir it well for three minutes. Then all you have to do is pour it into jars leave a uh, half inch headspace. I, I leave a, an inch just to be sure and um, clean the rims of the jars, put your lids and rings on and let the jam sit overnight. It's okay to use the glass jars in the freezer. I've done it for a long time and it's okay, but it's better to use plastic so that when you're bumping things around in the freezer, you won't break your jars. I always save my plastic peanut butter jars for this jam, but I've run out of uh, peanut butter jars. After you let the jars sit overnight or for 24 hours, um, you just put the jars in the freezer. When you need a jar of jam, you just take it out of the freezer and thaw it out. It's very simple. So, there you have it. Everything from strawberry plants to strawberry jam. Hope it helps. Yay! Hey. Oh. Not that one. Yeah, that one. That's not a good one. See, it doesn't taste good. Not that one. You want a lot of green ones. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> I guess, <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to pick those now. a good one. <laughs> not that not the yellow not the green ones. That's not good. Hey
<laughs> Easy pickings, huh? <laughs>